Good morning, Connections. It is Friday, August 14th, 2020, and we're together again. Great to have you. So glad that to have company to start the day together. More importantly, to start our day together with God, to seek Him in His Word, and to set a foundation for our day, making sure that we get armored up and well equipped for whatever may come our way today. Uh, I cannot stress enough how important it is to build this discipline because we are going to come up against it on a regular basis. And if we are not equipped and we are not prepared, chances are we're going to make poor decisions or we're not going to be properly equipped to speak life into those around us. So good job for being awake. Glad to see you again today. Let's get started. First and foremost, I want to give a shout out to our transportation ministry. It's something that I God placed on my heart uh, to recognize all of the folks that make Connections Church happen each and every week. Uh, this is not a solo effort by any means. There are many people working behind the scenes to make Connections Church what it is, and none work harder than our transportation team. Our transportation team is made up of John Barkin and Sean Haney and Dave Rowley. Uh, all three have have come in, come through in a pinch many, many times. John is has our uh, uh, the distinction of being the longest tenured driver that we've had. Uh, we went through several drivers before John uh, came on board, and uh, that was usually a, a six to eight month gig. John has been doing it as long as I can remember now. Matter of fact, this picture is of John behind the driver's uh, wheel as we first looked at the 1900 South Monroe property. So. Uh, that should give you a sense of just how long and John was driving for a few years before that even. So thank you uh, for your service, John. Um, Sean has been driving and actually received his, his driver's license so that he could become one of our drivers. And he has been driving for the past several years as well. And Dave, since coming on as a missionary, has that's just been part of the duties of keeping the fleet in order and uh, uh, making sure that, that the buses were going to run each and every week. He also sits in and, and substitutes drives or shares the, the route with me right now. Um, so I'm appreciative of that. A couple of things that have been going on over the last couple of weeks. Um, the shuttle that's pictured here, um, that's John's daily driver. Um, long after I was home, long after um, you were home, John was still sitting with this bus because it had broken um, its suspension and messed up the wheel bearings. And that took John, first and foremost, having the foresight to pull over and, and not uh, uh, do any uh, additional damage and sit with the bus. Thankfully, Dave and Sean came to his rescue and they got it towed um, and then... Uh, you know, we, we had to get it repaired. And that repair wasn't cheap. It was uh, almost $1,000 to get the suspension uh, put back in order, but it could have been much worse. And of course, your safety and the safety of all those that we transport is our primary concern. And then yesterday, or the day before yesterday, one of our other vehicles uh, went down. And um, again, it could have been a a several hundred dollar, if not close to a thousand dollar repair, uh, overheating. And, um, you know, first thought was yet another tow truck, but instead Sean and Dave both put their heads together. Lots of YouTube, lots of asking questions at, um, the advanced auto. And, uh, by the afternoon, that vehicle was back up and running and at the cost of less than $70. So um, I can't not express uh, enough 
uh, how amazing it is to have people in ministry that care about the ministry and choose to serve at my side and make things happen each and every day. And I'm going to sneak. <laughs> oh, bless me. So thanks again, John, Sean, and Dave. All right. To our last day of exploring the second missionary journey, you must realize by now that it is impossible to cover the entire missionary journey. If you've been following along, there's many stories in there that we just did not touch on. Um, Paul and Silas in prison is probably the, the biggest one that we, we missed. That happened in Philippi, so go back and read that. We are doing our very best to pick out some highlights and share with you just um, some of the things that God uses to build a church over uh, a long period of time. So uh, if you recall, we came from uh, two different situations where uh, Paul was, was received in, in Berea, but in Thessalonica, although he was received initially, um, the same types of opposition arose and so we compared and contrasted the hearts of those that can receive the message that God shares and those that are in opposition to. But we ended the lesson expressing that God always comes through and provides encouragement when encouragement is desperately needed. And that's what Paul received in Berea. Now today we're going to see that they uh, split yet again into two different ministry teams and Timothy and and Silas remain in Macedonia. Well, Paul continues his journey uh, and it takes him through Athens and then on into Corinth. So that's what we see highlighted here is uh, Corinth and Athens. And Paul is going to settle in Corinth for over a year and a half, growing the ministry. And that's why we see so much written to the church in Corinth and first and second Corinthians. Uh, it is a major uh, metropolitan area. Uh, as you see, it, uh, it's on the Aegean and also has an outlet back uh, to the west as well. So very major city. Uh, I often call it the Las Vegas of the biblical world. Uh, many different cultures, many different um, uh, belief systems and all mixing there. So what a great place for, uh, for the gospel to be shared and for, for life to be spoken into the streets of Corinth. So that's why Paul is going to focus uh, much of his time uh, in Corinth. And eventually we will see that, that Timothy and Silas also come to join him. We're going to talk today about uh, how to do ministry and how to, to build a church. And what it requires is following God because God is a very creative God and is always he invented outside the box thinking. And so we're going to see that and witness that as Paul travels to Corinth. Beginning in chapter 18, verse 1. After this, Paul left Athens and went to Corinth. There he met a Jew named Aquila, a native of Pontus, who had recently come from Italy with his wife Priscilla, because Claudius had ordered all Jews to leave Rome. So just some background of what's going on in the world that Paul is is speaking into is there's a lot of oppression against Jews in general. And since it's it it's coming against the Jews, it's also coming against a good portion of the early church. And they are not being, you know, separated out between Jew and Christian. They're all seen the same by the world. Uh, at this time, Christianity is just considered another sect of Judaism. And the world is in chaos. Uh, the uh, days of, of Roman power are, are waning. Um, and uh, as is the the case in, in, in many cultures, when that begins to happen, then we look for people to blame. And the Jews 
as you know in, in later history, are one of the, the, uh, the common scapegoats, if you will, um, throughout history because they are, at this time, uh, nomadic, homeless, living in, in other people's countries. And when things go, go south, um, that they're an easy, uh, easy target. So that's, that's gone on, you know, more recently in history in, uh, in Nazi Germany, but it was going on for a, a long period of time, long before uh, it, it occurred in Europe. So that oppression that we, uh, that we witnessed in Jerusalem is also happening in other parts of the world and God uses that to really, you know, spark uh, the church in many areas. And we saw that in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the world. And we're seeing it again and as we, we branch out from Rome into Greece, into uh, Macedonia, uh, uh, the same, uh, same expansion. And here they meet with Paul coming into Corinth at the same time that Priscilla and Aquila. Continuing, Paul went to see them. And because he was a tent maker as they were, he stayed and worked with them. Every Sabbath, he reasoned in the synagogue trying to persuade Jews and Greeks. Now we're going to pull this thread a little bit more when we study uh, First and Second Thessalonians on Sunday. But there are many things going on here in this this brief passage of well, I thought Paul was was a, a missionary. I thought Paul that was his gig. And here we learn that he's a tent maker and his way of making a living is is separate from his his call, which is to share the gospel. And we'll discover there are many different reasons for Paul to continue to to work. Uh, and earn a, a wage, and uh, some of them have to do with just being an example to others, and that's what we're going to see when we study Thessalonians um, on Sunday, is to demonstrate that everyone is called to share the gospel, no matter what their vocation, and Paul demonstrates that by not being a full-time uh, missionary and on the street corners every day, but he is working very hard to make sure that that he, uh, you know, has enough to pay the rent, but then spends every Sabbath sharing the gospel. And so, I often say, you may not be called to full time ministry. That does not um, relieve you of the responsibility of sharing the gospel. In order for the church to grow, we must demonstrate who God is no matter where we are. And we can do that through whatever our vocation. And in this case, Paul is being knitted together, literally, as a tent maker with fellow tent makers, uh, Priscilla and Aquila. Now, consider what that, that does for Paul. First and foremost, gives him friends, gives him a base camp to operate out of that... Um, uh, it's common in the uh, when ministering missionaries ministering in in the Muslim world today that they open uh, a tea house or they open a school or they open something else the community needs, and they minister over time to the people that are coming in out just for a, a, a cup of tea or uh, just to learn English, and uh, they demonstrate what it is to be a man or woman of God. And we've found that, that, that there's great success there because the emptiness that the world is trying to identify within them that they desperately want to fill is only filled by Jesus. And as they come to know these missionaries and come to see how they live and, and the, the hope that is within them, it, it's a natural process to, to be curious and and, and seek God. So that missionary model that we use even today is what Paul is truly using here in Corinth. 
He's the tent maker that also preaches in the synagogue on Sunday. So consider who you are. Are you the, the, uh, the chef at, uh, at Whataburger that shares the gospel with his neighbors and demonstrates what it is to, to be a godly uh, man or woman? through your workplace each and every day, that is valuable work. That is, that is as valuable, if not more valuable, than being a full-time pastor and minister. So God knows what he's doing. He thinks outside the box. He thinks much differently than, than we do. But in order to reach the world, we have to reach into all of these areas of our community. And the only way to do that is to do the work. So we'll touch more on that when we study Thessalonians uh, on Sunday. But just, just picture that it's not just Paul going from place to place, you know, staff in hand. Um, you know, uh, this is, you know, the ministry needs funded. And God does that in, in very unique ways. When Silas and Timothy came from Macedonia, Paul devoted himself exclusively to preaching, testifying to the Jews that Jesus was the Messiah. All right. Now we are starting to build a ministry team. And as I shared this morning, that there, God is building a ministry team around me that affords me the opportunity to, to focus more on the, the church side of things than the mechanics of, of ministry. And the same thing is being afforded to, uh, to Paul with Silas and Timothy, that as the ministry grows, then Paul can devote more and more time to, to sharing the gospel exclusively and leave the tent making, um, no mention that Silas and Timothy picked up the, the tent making business, but perhaps they just moved in and through the, the um, you know, their industry, were able to support everything that, you know, themselves and Paul as well. So uh, great models of ministry being discovered as the church is being planted, that there are all types of different uh, ministry models, and all of them are unique, but all of them are of God. So... That's what we need to take from this as we continue to look to ways to, to grow Connections Church is what we have witnessed, which is that I have a transportation ministry that, that uh, addresses vehicles that are uh, you know, damaged and need you know, professional repairs. I also have a ministry team that can assess and say, no, we can handle this and learn off of YouTube and, and, and save us a, a great deal of, of resource by fixing it themselves. So each of those kept me from having to, to do all of that part of the ministry on my own because God had provided hands to assist me in that. And there are many other hands, and we will, we will thank each of those as we, we go along, make sure that everybody recognizes the role that they play at church and how grateful I am and how grateful God is for, for their service in their heart. So um, we need to be willing to think outside the box and to be looking for, for creative ways, continuing to have conversations with many of, of uh, you over what that might look like in the new facility, small groups wise, uh, Stu is talking about developing a fundraising model. Uh, spoke, spoke to, to Charlene uh, yesterday about uh, uh, assessing uh, people's uh, 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 skill level and the things that they're interested in and dreaming and thinking of jobs that might be appropriate. So I believe we're right here in the same stage where Paul was and what he's demonstrating here in Corinth. So very exciting times. And as Paul set his feet here in Corinth for over a year and a half, 
I'm excited to see God set his feet at, uh, at 1900 South Monroe and that we will ministry for many, many more days. So uh, please continue to pray. Speaking of prayer, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord. We thank you that you are a creative God, that you are, you are an outside-the-box thinker, God. We, we thank you, Lord, for the inspiration that you provide through your word, that we don't need to think of ministry as something that just happens on Sunday or just happens midweek, but ministry is something that happens in the day-to-day -day as we go about living our lives, no matter where our vocation leads, no matter what our mission field looks like, you are there and shining the light into the world and demonstrating what it is to be transformed by your love, your mercy, and your grace is truly the call of each and every one of us. And seeing that a man of God who is called to be the apostle to the Gentiles is, is working each and every day, sewing up tents and selling them on the street, to pay for food and lodging and to take care of his friends just demonstrates to us how much you desire that for for you and for us today you're a great god lord forgive us for for limiting your power and your your creativity and narrowing the spectrum so 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 much that we only relate to you in one very small way expand our vision lord expand the ways that that the church ministers and shares your light open our hearts and continue to inspire us lord for your glory and for your honor in jesus name amen I encourage you today to start thinking outside the box. Think of how you can be equipped, how you, the things that you already have been equipped with, the, the skills that you have, and how you can use those for the kingdom. To get the word out and to demonstrate what it is to be a man or woman of God. Time to get off the bench and get into the game. So grateful that you were here. So grateful that we, we spent another week together. I'm looking forward to Sunday. We have our transportation set for the week. We will be picking up on Sunday morning between 8.30 and 9.30. If you are on the list, if you've made your reservation, please be ready at 8.30. The shuttle drivers, including myself, cannot sit for five minutes to 10 minutes for each of you to get your socks and shoes on. Come in your bare feet and get your shoes and socks on on the van but we need to to be moving um in a you know in a quick manner in order to get back and get prepared to, for the broadcast and for for church in general um it's not fair to our drivers to have you know seven stops and 10 minute wait at each stop that may not add up for you but that puts a lot more miles on our buses and a lot more miles on our drivers. So please be considerate, be ready at 8.30, even though you may not be picked up until 9.30, be ready to go and be looking for, for those little white shuttles. They're on the way. Thank you, bless you, I miss you all. I will see you Sunday, either live or broadcasting at 10 o'clock through Facebook. Be good. <laughs>